Hello, everyone, and first of all, thank you very much for being here. And today I will say about implementing zero downtime migration strategy in software as a service project. And imagine you are a big player in e-commerce stage like Amazon, and you are forced to take a maintenance break. Uh, last time they experienced downtime, they were losing $66,000 per minute. And we face similar uh, problem in Sailor, um, that is open source GraphQL first e-commerce platform. Mm. Obviously, obviously not at this scale because we are not uh, we are not yet as popular as Amazon, but still the problem is the same. I will show you how we handled the situation and the obstacles that we face along the way. So let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, I'm Iga Karbowiak, I'm from Wrocław, it's in Poland, and I've been uh, using Python in my work for over five years right now, and I've been working on Sailor platform for almost four years, and I'm happy to see how this project is changing from just an open source project to a proper product. Uh, firstly, I would like to tell you shortly the story that, that is behind uh, Sailor. So Sailor started as an open source monolith project built on Django with views. And in 2018, the big decision was made and GraphQL API was added. And a year later, Django views were totally removed, making Sailor a headless app, which basically means that we started to offer just an API without the front end side. Over time, uh, Sailor uh, grew up, we gained a community round, and uh, the idea to build a product around Sailor came up. And this leads us to the creation of the full uh, cloud environment that offers Sailor as a SaaS product. And as you can see, the story behind Sailor is constant growth. And when you are getting bigger, uh, you are getting more clients and you are facing bigger problems. And one of client's requirements was the ability to update versions without any downtime. So to sum up, the background of the problem uh, is that, that clients of e-commerce platform that Sailor is don't want to stop their stores at any time, as of course it means losing money. So we need to ensure that the system is working all the time, uh, even during the update and we need to minimize the migration time. And I think it's safe to say that sooner or later, each SaaS application will face downtown problem. So let's move on to the examples. And I will start with showing you the problematic operations, and then I will move to the solutions. And for this talk, I created a sample project with simple GraphQL API and database on PostgreSQL. It's the same configuration as we have on Sailor, and I will give you the link to, my, to this project at the end of the presentation. And let's assume that we are uh, currently running version V1 of the system. We have multiple app clusters that are using shared database, and we are uh, planned to uh, introduce some uh, changes on product type uh, that we will release in the next version uh, v2. Uh, here is the product model on the current version uh, v1 and the model is just simple Python class that refers to a single database, database table and the class fields refers to table columns. And uh, let's assume that our product model will have a name, description, and created fields. And we are uh, plan to add new unique Slack field that will be a human readable identifier of our product. And additionally, we want to rename field uh, created to created at to be consistent with other part of the project. Um, as we previously stated, we are currently on version V1 of the system, and assume we, that we released mentioned changes in version V2, and we want to upgrade to this version. So upgrading app instances is easy. We just need to gradually, uh, gradually replace old app instances with the new ones. 
The problem is with the database because it's shared resource and we cannot just clone it and uh, replace it. Uh, so instead, we will upgrade the database in place. So firstly, we'll be begin by migrating the database to the version uh, V2. So we'll be in a stage where we have upgraded database but still running up instances on previous versions. And once the migrations uh, are completed, we can start the app workers of the versions uh, V2 and uh, finally stop the app workers of previous versions. So the two stages that we should worry about are two and three, where we have upgraded the database, but still running app workers from the previous version. And in other words, we have the old code that is using upgraded database. And uh, we will analyze these stages in the following examples. And so let's move on to the problematic operations. We will start with adding a unique uh, Slack field that will be a human readable identifier of our product. And what you see on your right is uh, Django migration. And for those who don't know, migrations applies uh, object relational mapping changes into the database schema. Uh, in other words, database needs to know that something has changed in, uh, in uh, models. And migrations uh, defines operations that will be performed on the database, but also allow to run some Python function for making updates on existing instances. And to add a unique field, we need to follow three, uh, three steps. First is uh, adding a new label field. So we uh, will create new Slack uh, column on the product table. Next, uh, we need to update existing instances to set the proper values on, uh, to set the proper values for the Slack column. So we are calling the Python function to uh, do that, uh, that will do that synchronously. And after the function is finished, we will have the new Slack, Slack column filled in with proper values and we'll be ready to perform the uh, last step that is changing the slide field uh, to be unique. And so to apply this change, we are altering the Slack column on the product uh, table. Um, now let's assume that we release those changes on version uh, V2 and we uh, update the database to this version and we are currently on version V1 on, of the system as is shown uh, on this schema. When the API request for product creation is uh, called for second or subsequent time, the integrity error is raised. The error message is saying that product with empty Slack value already exists. And this is because the version V1 is not aware that the new uh, unique field was added and it's trying to save the row with null as a Slack. Below you can see the part of the product uh, table that is showing the described situation. So we have instances with proper Slack uh, values uh, set and one, with, uh, one row with empty value. So adding the next row with null as a Slack uh, will raise an error because values won't be unique anymore. And we'll dis discuss the solution later. Now let's move on to the second operation that is renaming the field from created to created at uh, to be consistent with part other part of the project. And seems to be pretty simple operation. We just, uh, we just renaming the column, but it might be problematic as well. As before, uh, let's assume that we release mention changes in version uh, V2 uh, we upgrade the database to this version and we are currently on version V1 of the system. So the API request for product creation, uh, as we can expect, is raising an error. And this time, the error message indicates that the, uh, that column created on product uh, table does not exist, which is accurate because we already renamed this column and we have only created add column on the database. However, however, the version V1 is not aware that something has changed 
and it's trying to save the value uh, in the old created column. And we'll get similar error when trying to retrieve an existing product from the database. And this time, the API is trying to fetch the data from the created column, which does not exist anymore. Now let's move on to the last operation that we'll discuss today. So let's suppose we have a large data set of products, perhaps a million or more. So updating all existing instances will take significant amount of time, no matter how hard we try. So the problem is that the update is blocking the migration process as we need to wait for update to finish to continue with the database migration. It also logs the database tables and keeps the database in unstable stage, which may, uh, which may result in slowing down the application or even, or even make it unresponsive. And as a result, it significantly extends the, times, the time of the database migration. So these were some of the problematic operations that we should be aware of, and let's sum up them. So uh, firstly, adding the unique or non label field, like adding Slack field in our example. And in Sailor, we had such situation, for example, when adding expiration date to our order model. Next, updating a big number of data. And I can say that in Sailor, we are facing this problem most often, as our clients have quite a big collections of orders and products, and any field normalization, like recently adding discounted price, means that we need to update each instance separately. And then renaming the field, like uh, renaming uh, created in our example, but also renaming the table, removing the field or table, moving the data from one field to another. And all of these operations will cause similar error like renaming uh, the field. And uh, in Sailor, we face this uh, problem when changing ID to a universal unique identifier. So the key element is to not remove any fields that previous ORM will use and to minimize the time of each migration. Now, as we know all the problems, I owe you the solutions. So the biggest difficulty in upgrading is changing, uh, is changing the database as it's shared resource and we cannot just clone it and replace it. And to ensure the zero downtime, we need to, uh, we need to ensure that the updated database will work with the old and the new version of the system. And there are two possible options to do that. First is make old code compatible with the new database schema. And the second is make the new database schema compatible with the old code. And fixing old, co old code is hard and it required to craft two releases. So we decided to choose the second path uh, as it's easier to achieve. And I will describe uh, the solutions that fit uh, this statement. And one, import, one, one more important assumption is that we are ensuring zero downtime only, uh, only from changing one version at the time. So in our example, uh, an upgrade from V1 to V2 will be possible without any downtime, but switching from V1 to V3 uh, won't be. Let's start with the solution uh, for our first problem that includes adding a unique uh, Slack field. So we need to ensure the compatibility of the previous version V1 with upgraded database to version V2. So we need to apply some of the database changes also in version V1. And the solution here is to apply the first two steps of migrations on version V1 of the system. So first is adding a new label field. So we are adding a new uh, label Slack column on product table. And the difference is in the second step because we want to minimize the time of each migration. So instead of updating existing instances synchronously in the migration code, we will delegate it to the uh, asynchronized task that will do that uh, in the background after the migration process. 
And I will tell you more about that later. For now, the most important thing is that we are doing this asynchronously. And we also need to ensure that any new instances created on version v1 will have the proper value set. So this leads us to the last step, which is, uh, which is updating the API. So when, any, so when any new row is added, it will have the uh, proper value set on, uh, on Slack uh, column. Just after performing the migration from V1, the data will, database will be in stage where we have new Slack column with empty values. And when the asynchronized tasks are finished, uh, the, Slack, the, the Slack column will be filled in with proper values. And uh, at that point, we'll be ready to safely the uh, field into uh, Unique on our target version. So the operation that must be performed on version V2 is to alter the Slack column to make it uh, unique. And the second operation was renaming the created field. So to ensure the compatibility, we will have to perform uh, the changes in three main steps that are uh, first um, adding, we need, firstly, we need to add a new field next to existing one. Uh, in the second step, we need to copy the data from the uh, old field to the new one. And finally, we can remove the old field. And what is, also, what is very important, we need to ensure that on each of these step, steps, the uh, database will be compatible with the previous version uh, of the system. So let's start with the changes on version V1. And here the steps are almost the same as in case of adding a unique Slack uh, field. So firstly, we need to add new uh, new label uh, created add column on product table. Uh, in the next step, we need to copy the data from, uh, from the old uh, column to the new one to update existing instances. And as before, uh, we will uh, will delegate this to the asynchronized task that will do that in the background. And we also need to update uh, the code. So when any new instances are created on version v1, um, the instances will have the proper value set for both old and the new uh, columns. And after finishing the migrations and asynchronized task, will be in the stage that is shown uh, below and we'll be ready to apply the changes on version v2. So on version v2, we need to remove the old field from the ORM and from the code, as we don't want to use it anymore. But we cannot remove it from the database because it's, because it's still used uh, by the previous version v1. Instead, we need to ensure that the Old, field, old column created is new label or has the default value set. And in our example, we'll make it uh, new label. So in, on the right, in the migration, we are separating the database and ORM changes to perform those actions. And we are also ready to change the field into non, uh, into non new label. So in version V2, we'll be in the stage where the old field is not used anywhere in the code, but it's still in the database. And finally, in the next version, in our example uh, version V3, when we are sure that only new field is in use, we are able to safely remove the old, old, old created column from the database. And as you can see, there is quite lots of steps that must be performed to just rename the column, the field. <laughs> now let's take care of update of a large uh, data sets. And first of all, the update should be done in the version before the darker target version, so we can be sure that all existing instances will have proper value set, uh, and we can safely apply the changes on target version. And to minimize the migration time, 
the data should be, uh, should be updated asynchronously after the migration process. And here's an example of migrations that cause the task, which copies the data from the old created to new created uh, add column. And the task is delayed in post-migration signal, which means that uh, it will be called after the migrations are completed to not bother the migration process at any way, so the data will be copied in the background. Now take a look at the task code. I have some tips for you that we work out. Uh, so firstly, uh, updates should be done uh, in uh, batches. Secondly, only instances that haven't been updated yet should be taken for update. Uh, and the instances should be ordered by some unique field like uh, primary key. And in our example, we are taking products that have empty created at uh, column. After the batch update, the task should query itself if there are still data to be proceed to not block the asynchronous task query for too long. And what's also very important, uh, the update of instances should be done in transaction with locked rows to avoid potential deadlock that might happen when multiple uh, asynchronized task, are, uh, task workers are in use. Right now, we know the problematic operations, we know how to write migrations to not crash the system, so the last missing piece is how, how to proceed uh, the update. So, firstly, we need to release uh, changes applied on version V1 as next minor or patch release. I will use uh, minor release V11 for simplification. Uh, so in our example on version V11, we'll have two new uh, new label fields, uh, Slack and created add. And next, we need to upgrade to this minor version and then to the target version. So firstly, we need to switch from V1 to V11 and then from V11 to V2. And upgrade through this V11 version is crucial. And in both cases, the process will look the same. So I will describe it in general on the example for switching from V1 to V11. So we will start from the configuration where we have uh, one app instance that is using the database, and we have two uh, asynchronized task, uh, asynchronized workers, for example, seller workers. So the first step is stopping the asynchronized task workers to make sure that they don't process uh, any task during the database upgrade. And then we need to run the database migration to update the database to, uh, to the version v11. And after finishing the migration, we can start the app workers of version v11. And let's notice that at this point, we have two app instances of different versions that are using the same database. But we ensure that compa database compatibility. <clears throat> so when any new product is created on version v1, it will have the null value set for both uh, Slack and created at column. And when the new product is created on version v11, it will have the proper value set for, uh, for both columns as we add use the API to do that. Uh, in the next step, uh, we can start the seller workers to run the task delight in the migrations. And, uh, and finally, we can stop the app workers of the previous version. So I described you the zero downtime upgrade. Now let me digress a little about what zero in zero downtime really means. So during the whole upgrade process, there is no moment when all app instances are stopped. Instead, the database is upgraded in place while the app instances are still in use. And this may result in minimal downtime, but it's so brief that it's essentially zero and it's not visible to the user. So moving back, after you upgrade to v11, any new instances will have the proper value set and all old instances will have uh, the new values for the start and will be updated by the asynchronized task in the background. Uh, and when the tasks are finished, 
the product table will be filled in with proper values and will be ready to upgrade to our target version V2. And to do that, we need to uh, perform um, the all steps that we do for switching from version V1 to V11. So if you want your upgrade to go smoothly without any maintenance breaks, remember that the most important thing is to not remove any fields that previous ORM uh, will use. And that's it. And if you're interested, here's the link to, for the example project uh, that contains uh, each steps uh, that I explained today and some additional ones, for example, like adding a database index. I know it's <laughs> two more slides, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much. This was very insightful. Um, my question goes, so I, perhaps this is, it wasn't clear to me. Um, one of the potential issues that I might see with this is that while the two versions are running, you might be writing data with the old version that potentially doesn't get migrated when you run the script to like, for instance, when you rename uh, moving the data from create to create it at. Mm -hmm. If the old instance is still writing new new stuff, you might get into a situation where you're writing uh, on the created table and that data doesn't get migrated into the created at. Did I get it wrong? Or uh, is that something that... Maybe I will move a little. Uh, yes, here is this example. If this is the moment when you have these two instances, yeah? From what I, I believe so, yeah. So the, 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 issue, the, the thing that I see the issue, mm -hmm. and just correct me if I'm absolutely wrong, which might be the case, is that after this, you stop the app version one. And the thing that I, that I might be wrong is that if you, if you do that at the very last step, you might be cr still creating stuff in the old version that doesn't get created in the new version. Yeah, if you create in this moment, when, when yes, any inst exactly. insta- Yes, Just before the, fi the fifth step, that's what I mean. Uh, to this, the last step? Yes, so exactly. You will in between the four and five, mm -hmm. you have the old instance that is still writing on the create table. Yes. And- uh, But it's not a problem because the okay. uh, data are copied in the background okay. from the old column to the new one. And if any new instance will be created on, from the old app instance, from mm -hmm. version V1, the new value will be set for created at, and for, for created will have the proper value, okay. and it will be copied. So if I understand right, the mm -hmm. migrate, migration mm -hmm. is asynchronously in the sense yes. that it doesn't stop. So it's, it's not something that uh, you wait for it to end before stopping the old instance. So it keeps running until there are no, nothing on the created uh, column. That's, is that what you mean? Mm, the column created is still there after, after uh, upgrading to version V11. Yeah, yeah, no, so, no, that, that's exactly my, the source of my uh, <laughs> confusion. That's, that's precisely it. Um, so, yeah, I I'm, don't want to keep this short. So, so, shall, shall we just talk about these later? In, okay, in, we can talk later about that. that. Thank, thank, <laughs> I will again, try to again, clarify. Thank you so much for this talk. <laughs> very, very insightful. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for me as well for the nice talk. Um, I'm also in the e-commerce sector and I had quite a bit of uh, nice recognition uh, here today, so things that we do very similarly. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I've noticed though is that um, doing this migration kind of like into two steps as you uh, explained puts quite a bit of onus on the developers to kind of notice that they're now doing something that yes. requires doing that. And um, that's something we've like had some troubles with. We've tried like writing tests for that and so on. But um, yeah, the cases get quite complicated, especially when you have indexes and so on. Um, do you have any experience there how to kind of handle and help developers kind of notice that now they're really doing something that uh, you need 
kind of that two-step process. Mm -hmm. I can say that we are currently learning that, to be honest. And <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, if somebody is putting something to review, all of the, our teams need to take care of that and say, hi, hello, you need to add the zero downtime support here. And we also have some, you know, um, some pages in our docs that are saying that we, you need to do that. But it's, it's hard to, to keep it. You need to remember, you need to keep the pull request for the next version and you need to create the pull request for the previous versions. So it's lots of job, uh, additional job for the developers. For we sure. appreciate I'm not the only one who's having that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I have one small question. Why we uh, stop salary worker before migration? Uh, Why? Uh -huh. can, what's the fundamental difference between app V1 and salary workers V1? Yes, because um, we are on, on version V1. We are V11. We are defining the salary, salary workers that will be. Uh, sorry, the asynchronized task that will be called in the migrations and they are only on version V11. So we need to upgrade the salary workers to this version V11 to contain this task that will be uh, delayed in the migrations. Yes, but why um, can, uh, can't we stop uh, salary workers V1 um, after uh, database migration? Why can't we switch step? One Be and step, um, step two. Because uh, the seller workers will don't have information that this task exists, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be the, like quick if it, if the migration will call this task because the tasks are called directly in the migration. So if the migration will call the seller task that it does not exist in seller, it might crash. <laughs> Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, I was just wondering what you're using to actually manage uh, this process. So, for example, when the database is done making all of its changes, then you need to know to then stop app version one, right? So, how do you do that? What uh, what software or methodology are you using to to track that? Uh, but you are saying from developers' perspective. Sorry, I don't understand correctly the question. I mean, well, you're you're. So when you make the changes to the database, then you need to, when it's done, when it's mm -hmm. asynchronous changes, then you need to tell app v1 to stop, right? Mm -hmm. How does it know? What do you... Uh, to the, be honest, what? it's a uh, cloud developer's work, and okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, thank you.